Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. Uh, the purpose of this video is to give an example of how to deal with frictional forces and the normal forces that uh, also occur uh, with the frictional forces. So what we're looking at here is, you know, imagine we got this box, this 20 kilogram object sitting here with this 80 Newton force applied uh, at the location shown at 30 degrees. Uh, we're going to assume a frictional coefficient along the surface of 0.3 and what we're going to do is try to determine whether or not this box will uh, start moving. Now it's important to realize that when I say start moving there's really two possibilities here. Uh, possibility number one is that maybe this box could start sliding. Uh, another general possibility is that a lot of times what can happen is these boxes can start tipping. So when you're dealing with friction and you're talking about impending motion, there's really two cases you have to consider, sliding motion and tipping motion, and I'll try to demonstrate both of these in this uh, example. All right, so I'm going to start with the free body diagram of the box, and first one I'm going to put as usual is the gravitational force, and as usual I'm going to put it at the center of mass of the system. Uh, surface and contact that's going to give us both normal and frictional forces. The line of action for the frictional force is along this surface. Now the line of action for the normal force really is not known in this problem. Um, could be left or right, I don't know, it kind of depends. Let's just say I guess it to be to the right. And again this is just a guess, I'm going to go ahead and put that normal force in. And it's important to realize that this distance, whatever this is, that's an unknown in this problem that we're going to have to determine. Okay. Now, you might say, why, why did I put it to the right and why not left? Ah, to tell you the truth, I just guessed. Uh, if you know for sure uh, by observation, put it on the correct side. If you don't, don't think about it too long. Just put it in its correct side, assign a variable to its position. If this number comes out positive, we'll know that we guessed correctly. If this number, when we solve for x here, comes out negative, uh, that would mean that it's actually just on the other side. Alright, uh, now we just start writing uh, equations for this. One equation I can say is this, if we sum up forces y direction that has to equal zero, up positive, I know definitively from looking at this load there's no way this thing is going to start accelerating upward. The corresponding equation is going to be plus n minus mg minus the y component of the 80 newtons, so I'm going to put minus um, p sine 30 and the frictional force does not have a y component, so that's done. This sum is equal to zero. So I can calculate the normal from this. It's going to equal mg plus p sine 30, and the mass is given to be 20 kilograms. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate a value. And I get uh, 236 newtons out of that normal force. And again, uh, the mass was 20, gravitational uh, field strength 9.8 newton per kilogram, and an 80 newton force p. All right, now, here's what I can do with this. I can now calculate a maximum possible frictional force. All right, if this is a static coefficient of friction, which is what I had intended when I made this up, then the maximum possible frictional force is going to be 0 0.3 times 236 newtons. I get basically 71, or I'll, I'll say 70.8 newtons. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to compare that to the x component or the horizontal component of this force. 80 newtons times the cosine of 30 degrees is... Let's see... I get 69 newtons for that, or 69.3. So what I've discovered is the horizontal force component here that's trying to, to slide that box along is 69.3 newtons. The frictional force has a maximum value of 70.8 newtons. What I know from that now is that the frictional force in reality is 69.3 newtons, and this thing's not going in anywhere. I know that acceleration x direction is zero because the maximum possible frictional force is greater than the force component to the right in the direction that this thing uh, may or may not have accelerated in. Now, 
what this guarantees is no translational motion. To guarantee no rotational motion, we have to, we have to inspect this. If it turns out that we calculate a value of x and imagine that that x value was bigger than 0.4, maybe 0.6 or 0.7, that would mean that this force needs to be applied way out here to keep this thing from tipping over, which isn't possible because the box ends. Uh, as long as this x value is between negative 0.4 and plus 0.4, we know that this thing's not going to tip over. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, calculate a value for x by writing a moment equation. Now let's see, i got to choose a point here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and choose this point right here because then I can um, basically ignore the frictional force and the gravitational force. So sum of all moments about point P, oops, uh, I'll put point G for the green point equals zero. And again, that G there is representing that point. Counterclockwise positive, feel free to you know call that point, in, in, you know, if you're looking at this, uh, feel free to call that anything you want. But if we sum moments about this point, we're gonna have plus, or I'm sorry, minus N times X. Minus because of this force right here is creating counterclockwise moment about this point. And I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go back to plus. It's been a long day here. This force makes this box want to rotate counterclockwise about the green point and I'm calling counterclockwise positive, so that moment term would be positive. Right? Uh, these two forces do not show up in that moment equation because their lines of action go right through that point. Now let's talk about this 80 Newton force. And I'm going to think about this in terms of components. We've got a 80 cosine 30 to the right and an 80 sine 30 down, but it's actually applied here. In this picture, I'm gonna draw it right here. 80 sine 30, and again, these are in Newtons. So when I write my moment equation, I'm gonna take these independently. I'm gonna take this one first. We're gonna have minus 80 cosine 30 times 0.2. I should put note consistent units. So we've got this force times this distance producing clockwise moment about that point. That's why it's minus. All right. Now let's deal with this guy. That one's going to produce positive moment because this force is creating counterclockwise moment about this point. So we're going to have uh, 80 sine 30 times this distance, which is 0.4. And that's it, equals zero. Those are the only forces creating moment about the green point. Again, that was a plus two. So what I'm going to do here now is solve this for x. I think I'll just take a moment and pause this video to keep it shorter while I do that. Okay, I'm back. That was quick. Uh, when I solve this equation for x, I get a value of negative 0 0.00908 meters, or in other words, negative 9.08 millimeters. So what we know is this force actually is applied slightly to the left. The minus sign, it doesn't directly mean left. It means uh, opposite of what I have shown in the picture. So I measured x uh, to the right, uh, minus x, minus uh, minus 9.08 millimeter means 9.08 millimeter to the left over here. So you notice in this case that's barely off center. That's because this force vector points pretty close to this point. That's why that's happening. Had this force been applied up higher or maybe horizontally, that would give you a much larger value for x. But anyway, the important thing is that this force is in fact applied somewhere along here, so it's not going to tip over. Um, so it's not going anywhere horizontally, although I would say just barely. We've got a 69.3 uh, Newton force trying to accelerate left, and the maximum frictional force is 70.8. If this force jumped to, say, 72, it would start accelerating to the right. But anyway, in this example, it's not. And because the normal force is applied in such a way that it does end up somewhere on the bottom of the structure, it's not going to tip over either. Hope this video helps demonstrate these concepts. Have a great day.